Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Christine Stampin' Spot. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm really excited to share some note cards that I made for you today using the brand new Enjoy Life stamp set from Stampin' Up! We're going to go over a couple different techniques today. We're going to learn how to do this watercolor background. So we will be using some watercolor paper today. We're going to be doing some heat embossing as you can see from the shine there. That's finally picking up for me on camera today. That's great. Um, you can see from the shimmery shine here we've done some embossing. And we're also going to be using our Stamparatus. So I've got several techniques packed into this one video, which I hope you will enjoy. So honestly, I started making watercolor backgrounds and I couldn't stop. So that's how I came up with five little uh, note cards here to share before we even make the card on video. <laughs> I just couldn't stop making these. They're so much fun to do. And it's just the same general card layout. Some I did in strips, some I did fuller card fronts. Um, just for fun, just, just uh, a lot of fun to create some of these backgrounds here. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. There's a lot of stamping to do to create this little scene, but it's really easy to do and our Stamparatus makes it extra easy. Now, if I wasn't going to be doing embossing, I would not use the stamping tool. I would just, they're, they're photopolymer stamps. I just stamp, you know, look right through my clear blocks and create this scene. But because we are using watercolor paper, watercolor paper is quite thick. So it can be very hard to get a good impression the first time you stamp something down. So if you use a stamping tool like the Stamparatus, you can stamp multiple times in the same location until you have that nice full image that you're looking for. And that's what we want with these big thick silhouette images. We want the whole thing to be nice and filled in so we can have a nice full embossed image. So the way that I'm going to achieve that look is with my Stamparatus today because sometimes I have to give these a couple stamps in the same, a couple you know presses down in the same location to get the full image that I want. And again, that's just because of the watercolor paper. That is not because of a defect in the stamp. It's just because we have this thick watercolor paper that we're using today and that can cause um, the stamp to not stamp down perfectly the first time that you use it. So for this particular card that we're going to be making today, you're going to, like I said, need some watercolor paper. And I'm gonna do one much like this one, except I'm gonna change the watercolor background just a bit here. But it's just gonna use the basic black and gorgeous grape cardstock. And then we're gonna use some various inks here to create a really pretty watercolor background. Then we'll do our stamping and our heat embossing. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do, like I said, is simply create a watercolor background. And to do that, you're going to need some ink pads and an aqua painter. Now, when you order aqua painters from Stampin' Up!, they come in a pack of two. One has a smaller tip, and then the other one has a thicker tip. The thicker tip one is what we're using today, and it is fantastic for creating these big washes across a larger piece of cardstock. Whereas the smaller tipped one is great for watercoloring small images. All right. So I've got some scratch paper here and I have a piece of our watercolor paper, which is excellent quality watercolor paper, by the way, I definitely recommend it. And I'm just choosing some colors that I love that I really think go together. So I will be using Pacific Point, Melon Mambo, Gorgeous Grape, and Daffodil Delight. And they're gonna go from bottom to top. So the bottom is gonna be blue. Now to get the ink, ready to go for your aqua painter. You simply squeeze your ink pen so that you have, and then you open it up and you'll have a glob of ink there on your lid. Okay, so now we're going to take our aqua painter. I've got a little paper towel over here. I'm gonna give it a little squeeze on the towel so the water starts coming out and I'm going to wet my paper, just not very neatly. I'm just gonna get it wet so that we're ready to, we're ready, it's ready to absorb the, the, the ink or paint if you wanna think of it as paint. All right, now I'm taking my aqua painter into that Pacific Point ink that I've gooped up on my lid, which serves as my palette, really. And now I'm just, as you can see, not neatly, I'm just spreading some of this Pacific Point ink along the bottom. Now, to clean the tip off before I move into my next color, I have my little towel over here. I'm just gonna squeeze 
and sort of wet that tip and then you're good to go when no more blue ink comes off as you're rubbing the tip. So we're good to go to our next color. Our next color, I'm going to use some Melon Mambo if I can get my Pacific Point to close. There we go. All right, we're gonna use some Melon Mambo. So you squeeze the ink pad, open it up and we have a glob there in our lid and I'm gonna get that all over my aqua painter here and then I'm just going to rub it right above where we've put down the blue and at first I'm sort of ignoring the little line and now I'm going to go down into the blue it's going to turn it a little purple that's okay it's actually pretty and we want just sort of a transition so that's why I went into the blue last so we have our brighter pink up here and then this shade of blue and pink mixed together now I'm cleaning off my aqua painter tip until no more ink comes off now we're ready to go into the next color which is going to be our gorgeous grape. This is a new color and these are the new ink pads. The same trick still works. You just squeeze really hard in the middle of your ink pad while it's closed and then you open it up and as you can see there you have your big glob of your paint, if you will, ready to go. So I'm just going to get that all over my aqua painter and do the same thing. I'm going to put lots of purple ink here. This is such a pretty color. And again, I started above the pink. Now I'm going to come down and blend it with the pink, just so we have a smooth transition line between the pink and purple inks, so it's not quite such a stark line there. I'm going to go over it just a couple times until I'm happy with it, and I think that that looks really pretty. All right, squeeze again to clean off your tip. Make sure no more color comes off. And by the way, when you're starting a technique like this where you're going to be washing with watercolor a whole big panel of cardstock like this, make sure your aqua painter is full because you have to transition between the colors and to do that you have to squeeze water to clean the tip. So you'll use quite a bit of water. So make sure that it's full. Finally, I'm going into my Daffodil Delight. I've got some of my ink there in the lid now. I'm going to ink that up or get that uh, all squished into my aqua painter. And now we're going to go ahead and paint the top portion of this cardstock with this beautiful Daffodil Delight yellow ink. And we're of course going to also blend down here a little bit into the purple. And it does muddy it up a little bit, but that's okay because when this is all finished it's and dried, it's going to be beautiful. I've done one off camera that I let had, that I let dry so you can see what this exact technique will look like all dry in just a moment. Okay, now I'm going to give this a squeeze. Now if you notice, we're done with our inks now, if you notice in some of the final cards, and I'll bring them back over, there are some really fun watercolor looks like speckles or drops of watercolor. Can you see that? There, for example, here is sort of in the middle where a girl is standing. Let me see, is that picking up? Yeah, like there and there are some dots and, you know, here's some dots. And I'm not talking about the rhinestones. I'm talking about sort of these water droplet looks on our cardstock. Um, I love that touch and that is so easy to do. If you want it to be really um, dramatic like this one, you can use our spritz bottles. These are very inexpensive and all you would do is just take it and spritz some water onto this whole panel and then let it dry. I'm going to do the little dots like this card on this particular panel and let me show you how to do that. All you do is you squeeze some water onto your towel from your aqua painter and then you just, so now your aqua painter is kind of f flush with water, there's a lot of water there, and then you beat it across your finger and let the drops of water, squeeze it again, get some more water flowing and do it again. So these drops of water are really flowing and hitting the paper there. Now I'm going to go ahead and close up my aqua painter. We are done with that. Right now it looks ridiculous, right? You can see those droplets we put on there. It looks kind of silly. This is going to dry, all right? And this is going to look like this. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? And this is the panel that we're going to go ahead and do our stamping on for today. All right, so let's go ahead now and bring over our Stamparatus, which is our brand new stamping tool. 
Okay, and I have used other stamp positioning tools before, and I have to give a shout out to this one. I am in love with it, absolutely in love with it. Now I'm going to take our Enjoy Life stamp case and just set it uh, underneath my lid here. So I have it opened up, so I have my lid. You can put a second lid here to do multiple images. I'm just gonna stick with the one lid today. All right, and it's kind of hard to see, uh, but it's on top of this stamp case here. I'm gonna try to stay in camera the frame the best that I can. This is a little big, so it's kind of hard to get all on camera, but you'll get the idea, I promise. All right, now again, this is the piece that I watercolored before coming on camera. I used the same technique as the one that I just did on camera, but it's still wet. So I needed to make one before coming on camera that, that was dry so we could do our stamping. I'm gonna stick now just some scratch paper underneath here. And now we're gonna go ahead and stick this in here. Now we have these bar magnets that come with the Stamparatus. You get two of them. I just added some washi tape to it. I find that that makes it a little bit easier to pick up this large bar magnet. And then I have just some small magnets from some other supplies. And so sometimes I just stick those on as well. Okay, let's make sure we're on frame. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the little grass down here that our little girl is standing in. All right, so to need that to you to do that, we're going to take this grass image and I'm just going to line it up. Again, if I was not using watercolor paper, I would just simply do this like I've done all my other videos with acrylic blocks. But because I'm using this thick watercolor paper, you'll see what I mean in a moment. It can be very hard to get a solid image the first time you stamp it down. Now, if you wanted to cut out one of these steps that I'm about to show you, you would simply use your Versamark ink and black embossing powder, which Stampin' Up! now sells. They used to sell it, and then they stopped selling it, and now they're selling it again. It's fantastic. I used to have it. I just don't happen to have any more right now. But I can still emboss in black if I, if I ink this stamp up with my Versamark, then directly put Memento black ink right on top of that, and then use my Stampin' Up! clear embossing powder. So that's the steps I'm going to do today. But again, if you have black embossing powder, just use Versamark, stamp it down, and put your black embossing powder on and you're done, okay? So you can take out the black ink pad step if you have black embossing powder. Does that make sense? Okay, so I have my grass stuck to the lid of my Stamparatus. I have put Versamark ink, and now I am putting my Memento. Get this nice and inked up here, like so. I'm gonna turn the stamp case over. I think it might be easier to see what I'm doing if the cover, because the cover's a little busy. All right, you also wanna grab your embossing buddy before I forget. I forget this stuff sometimes and I always regret it. Your embossing buddy, because I have touched this cardstock, I have fingerprints on it, and that's something that our embossing powder wants to stick to. So by using my embossing buddy here, and I'm just using it where I'm gonna be stamping this image, that will take off um, any chance that this embossing powder will stick to anything but where we've put our Versamark. And now I'm closing my lid down and stamping this grass down on top of my paper. Now, as you can see, it is not the strongest image. There's some gaps in it. Again, that is not the stamp's fault. That is the watercolor paper's fault. Okay, so we're gonna grab the memento again. There's still some Versamark left on here, so this we're still gonna be okay with our embossing. The Versamark is very sticky. It stays wet for a little while. We have a little bit of time to work with this. So I'm gonna ink it up again and shut that lid down, push hard, and that's a much better image. Now I'm just going to remove my magnets and sort of slide this paper and I'm bringing over my clear embossing powder. I'm also going to turn on my heat gun at this time. It's a little bit away from me, but you're gonna hear it. But the reason that I'm doing that is because it is best to get your heat gun nice and heat, heated up. Is that right, grammar? <laughs> you wanna get it heated, heated up, I guess that's right, uh, before you uh, bring it over to your paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and have it going. I'm sorry, I know that's probably a little bit of an annoying noise, but it really does produce the best results in my experience. Okay, so now I have that clear embossing powder on top of the image that we have stamped, and now I'm bringing my heat gun over, and we're just gonna move this around until it melts this embossing powder. And when we're all done with this, you're going to see a beautiful, shimmery, shiny black silhouette of this grass. And it's really, really pretty. 
There's nothing hard about this technique. It just takes a little bit of time. Because we used this stamp apparatus, the stamping stamp positioning tool, as you can see, nothing went wonky with the grass. I stamped this twice and it looks perfect. You didn't get a double image or anything like that because the magnets hold your paper in place, thereby allowing you to stamp multiple times in the same location if you need to. Okay, I'm gonna bring a wipe over, clean this stamp off. Notice I've scooched my paper over a little bit in my stamparatus because I now want to finish my grass because I want it to go the length of the paper, the bottom of the paper there, and if I had it back up in this corner, we would have butt up against the hinge of the lid and it wouldn't have worked. So I scooched my paper over, and I'm now just sort of overlapping the grass just a little bit. That actually didn't go down exactly where I wanted it, so let me try one more time. I'm just going to move my magnet a little bit over here as well. Okay. All right, there we go. That looks good. Now we shut the door. By shutting the door, the stamp now sticks to the window or the door of our, of our stamp apparatus. I'm going to repeat the same process again. So Versamark first. Nice and sticky with the Versamark. Then the Memento. Leave this out if, you're, if you have black embossing powder. You're done after the Versamark step if you have black embossing powder. Now I'm going to shut the window or the door of my Stamparatus. Push down hard on this stamp and lift it up. It, there's still a, a few little specks here. And again, it's because that watercolor paper is grainy and thick and uh, I, I always work with the grainy part up I get the best results that way but that means I generally need to use a stamp positioning tool for my stamping to get the best results of images for my images so that's why I'm doing it this way I'm going to quickly clean this off we are now done with our grass we're gonna go ahead and put more clear embossing powder over this second half that we have done here and I just use a just one of these little Ziploc containers, um, nothing fancy for my embossing powders. And now we're just going to heat this up again with our heat tool. And again, this is just so that whole line of grass goes all the way across the bottom of our paper. If you cut the paper into a smaller strip, you may only have to, like some of my other cards I showed you at the beginning of the video, you may only have to ink the grass up once. And that's fine. It just depends on the design of your card. Okay, so now let me bring this up to the camera so you can see the effect that the, that the embossing has. And I've embossed in black even without embossing powder. Isn't that cool, guys? And I just love the effect of the embossing. Now, as you can see, this is watercolor paper. I've put a lot of water and, and ink on this. So it, it's warped a little bit. No big deal. I'm going to use lots of adhesive when we put our card together to fix that. I just wanted to point that out because it's probably obvious in the video that, the, <laughs> that it's a little bit uh, warped. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that's fine. Now we're going to remove this image. We're done with our grass image. And now we can put, this is the beauty of the Stamparatus. We can put a lot of different images down at the same time and really save us some time. So I am going to put my little, my girl here with her arms raised, a couple different butterflies from the stamp set. And I'm gonna put a little sort of, they look almost like poppies to me or some kind of dandelion, maybe something to add to the little grass on this side. So I'm adding all of these things, shutting the door of the Stamparatus to pick the stamps up. I'm gonna grab my embossing buddy. Now I'm using, I'm doing a new area of the cardstock. So I wanna make sure and uh, use my embossing buddy over everything. Same process now, use your Versamark, get it nice and sticky with your Versamark ink pad, and then take your Memento. And get these nice and inked up. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and shut the door of our Stamparatus, and now we push down on our stamps, and you're gonna see why the Stamparatus is so important for watercolor paper. Look, that is not a good image. Now this stamp stamps perfectly on regular Whisper White cardstock the first time down. Trust me, I've done it. And I can promise you that that is true. But simply because of the watercolor technique, which we don't use for every card, this is a special technique that I like to do occasionally, but I love having my Stamparatus before, because I do love this technique. 
and I really need this stamping tool in order to make sure that I have a nice solid image. See this one I'm probably gonna have to stamp three different times to get my girl fully uh, inked up in black the way that I want her so she's a full uh, silhouette on my card front here. And that's okay, you still have some Versamark on there. Our embossing is gonna be okay. You can ink it as many times as you need to. I'm actually gonna do it a fourth time just to show you that you can ink it as many times as you need to. And by the way, this is a freshly inked ink pad as well. So it's not the ink pad or anything like that. It truly just is a result of this thick, grainy watercolor paper. All right, so now we're done with our stamping of these images. I'm gonna bring over the clear embossing powder and we are just gonna sprinkle that with our spoon here over top of what we've just stamped down. So our butterflies, our girl, and our little dandelion or whatever that little addition is to our grass. I'm just gonna lightly tap the back to get the excess off and then we bring our heat tool over again and go ahead and heat this image up and melt our embossing powder. to the camera again so you guys can really see the shimmer and shine that you get to the silhouette images that we've stamped down. Isn't that beautiful? Now the final little bit of stamping that we have to do, let's take a wipe here and clean off this, these stamps super quick. And then the final thing that we have to stamp is our sentiment and then we can put this card together. All right, so let me just remove these from our Stamparatus window here, or door. I keep calling it a window, it's actually a door. Now I'm going to use for this card the How Beautiful a Day Can Be When Kindness Touches Its Sentiment. So I'm going to put this back in the upper right hand corner of my Stamparatus. Go ahead and put my magnets down. And I'm going to just, if my head's in the camera, I apologize. I'm just trying to get over this to have my sentiment nice and centered. And I'm going to pick it up with the door of my Stamparatus. Same procedure again. We're going to use the Versamark. Get it nice and sticky with Versamark ink. We're then going to grab our Memento and ink this up in black Memento ink. And then stamp it down. Probably going to have to do this twice. It's not a full silhouette like our girl, but again, it's watercolor paper, so. I think the sentiment's a tiny little bit crooked. I was trying to keep my head out of the camera and I didn't quite get it perfect, but that's okay. You guys get the idea of what we're doing here. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and remove this. I will clean this off super quick. We can remove our stamps and our magnets and our scratch paper. We can set our Stamparatus aside. We are done with it. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of our clear embossing powder over our sentiment. that I did forget to use my embossing buddy make sure you do that don't do what I do I forget it all the time and then I have little specks that just make the card a little bit imperfect it's not a huge deal but it's a little better if you remember to use that embossing buddy now we're just melting this embossing powder so we have our sentiment nice and shiny just like the rest of our card front here Is how beautiful a day can be when kindness touches it. Okay, I'm going to set this aside so that can cool off for a minute. We're done with our embossing powder. I'm going to go ahead and close that up. And then just I spilled a little embossing powder, so we'll just clean that up super quick here. And now we are ready to go ahead and put our card together. So let me just open this up here. Reuse my scratch paper here. Now I'm going to bring over a piece of A2 sized card base. This is in Gorgeous Grape. 
and I have a piece of basic black cardstock to layer right on top of it. And the basic black is cut at um, five and a or a four by five and a quarter. Just some basic layering on the front of this card so that our um, panel that we've watercolored can really be the star of the show. So we're just going to layer this on top of our gorgeous grape. Make sure that looks good. And now we'll be layering our watercolored and embossed and stamped panel right on top of that. So now because this is watercolor paper, like I said a moment ago, it's a little warped. So you want to be extra plentiful with your adhesive. So don't scrimp on your adhesive when you're using watercolor paper, simply because 40 millionth time <laughs> is very thick. I'm just stressing that because it is a completely different medium to work on and I don't want you to be frustrated uh, and think, oh, I can't, I can't deal with this. It's too different. It is different, but you just have to learn its quirks and then you'll be okay. And once I have that adhered down, it's no longer warped or anything like that. No one ever knows that, you know, it was a little warped before we adhered it to our card front. So there is our beautiful card. What do you guys think about that? To finish this card up, I would add some rhinestones to it. I'm not gonna do that because this video is long enough, but I will show you again some of the final cards. Here's one with the same sentiment, and you can see I have added some beautiful little rhinestones to the front of that just for some interest. I really wanted the um, the watercoloring to be the star of the show. So I kept the cards very simple. You could of course add twine or ribbon to the front of this if you wanted to, um, but I chose not to for these particular card designs for today. And there's that one, this one here. And I love those little specks that that water really adds that I showed you when we were watercoloring. It's so much fun to do that. And then finally this one. I'll bring over our panel. It's not quite dry yet, but this is what we made on camera. And you can see this one, we really, I really got a lot of water droplets on it. This will be a beautiful for a card front when we're ready to use it and it's all dry. Okay guys, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know this looks like a lot of work, but it was really, it's really easy. It's just a lot of steps. Uh, but none of them are hard and you just have to kind of play around a little bit with the new medium of the watercolor paper and your aqua pen but once you get the hang of it i think you guys will really love this technique i hope you love it and thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day and i will catch you in the next video Bye bye